Eventually, the skittish engineers made their way to the sound and smell of everyone eating. They'd brought some MREs and canned food of their own, and it was all cooked up and distributed, and good, term, good times were had. The engineers liked Challenger, and they all took turns playing with her. The comm systems got reset properly and set up. Command was notified, and the replacement security team was sent out. The team spent the remainder, remainder of the day resting and swapping out security details. Chapter 22, Doug, Finality, Late Night, Day 2. Everyone had turned their comms and cell phones back on. Thankfully, they had all been in those funny bags. The engineers described what they thought the machine was. They were bummed it was destroyed, but understood why it had to be done. At some point in the middle of the night, the second security team calmed in and landed. They were official federal-level law enforcement and didn't say much, but didn't seem like bad people. They had a meeting in the conference room and thanked the contract team for their service, but explained the mission had changed. The storm had hit full blast and civil unrest had reached critical levels. The separatists hit every single major city along the I-5 belt at exactly the same time. They were using block block tactics, but expected to be rolling in with a main uniformed force to save the cities by morning. Orders from high up were to get all the conservative officials out of the cities and pull all the funding and let them have their precious city-states. There was one catch. They could have all of this, but they couldn't have electricity. Everyone in the room chuckled. The chief of the new security team asked, I assume this isn't going to be a problem for anyone. Doug and all the contractors didn't care one way or the other. They only do what they're told. The engineers asked if they at least got to stay and keep the dam going. The security chief asked that they absolutely please stay, but that they wouldn't be prisoners. Their families could come live up here if they could get here, whatever they wanted. Everyone was happy. Everyone got what they wanted, and everyone shook hands. Doug and his team grabbed their gear and got on the new helicopter with the new helicopter pilot that totally wasn't going to die. Doug looked back for a second to see an additional helicopter land with crates of gear. As the chopper pulled up, he saw them open one of the crates to have an M249 with a huge stationary mount poking out of the box next to it with thousands of rounds of ammo and a laser-guided targeting with the friend or foe system on board. At least being American-made, he didn't have to worry about it shooting him out of the air like a certain notorious Russian missile system. Cough, cough. Doug mentally shrugged to himself as they choppered off into the night. Mission successful. Chapter 23, Doug, flight home, later night, day two. They got about halfway home by Doug's measurements. One second it was a normal looking nightscape, and then as everyone was sleeping and as far as Doug could see in every direction, the lights started shutting off grid by grid. Nobody said anything on the helicopter. They landed also without a word back where they'd started. Only about half got off, including Doug and Challenger, and then the helicopter took off to another spot in the darkness. Doug could hear the sirens off in the distance. Challenger walked around to sniff. The snow had melted a bit, and Doug could smell salt in the air. It was colder because of the wind, but he could tell it was about to thaw out when the sun rose and the warmer air blew in as the storm moved inland. Chapter 24, Doug, getting home, later night, day two. The storm would widen and then weaken. Everything would be rainy mush in half a day. It'd be just in time for the city trucks to come out and act like they did something, but in reality, it'd be two days late as always. It was like they had a silent agreement with the tow truck companies and insurance companies to backdoor tax the living crap out of all the idiots that would go driving. Another idiot tax. Doug thought about it though, and this would be the last of the idiot taxes for a long while. He walked to his truck, opened the passenger door, and Challenger son turned over and hopped in. They drove home and turned the radio on. The news was broadcasting on emergency power and assured everyone it was a temporary blackout, but Doug obviously knew otherwise. He pulled up to the house and there was a big chest waiting on the front door that was heavy as all get out. He let Challenger out to go potty and scout, and then loaded the chest into the back of his truck without even looking at it. He felt like it weighed well over a hundred pounds, which made it interesting in the snow. He dragged it, and then pivoted it into the back end. Challenger ran around and sniffed in the yard, and Doug went inside to get a few things. He brought out two bags and threw them in the back of the truck and went back inside. Challenger sat down and watched Doug walk back and forth doing this. Doug got out two more big bags and threw them in the back of the truck. Challenger watched, not really thinking anything of it. Doug came back out with two giant 40-pound bags of dog food and finally threw those in. That definitely got Challenger's attention. 
Doug looked in the back of the truck and it was full, so he closed it quietly as to not wake the oblivious neighbors sleeping naively in their warm homes. Doug went back in and got a few more hard cases. Those went in the back seat and then shoved in the back and stuffed them down on top so he could see out his rear view. He locked the house a final time. There was no point in messing with the porch light. The passenger door was still open. He patted on the seat and in leapt Challenger, ready to go. Doug drove over the hill about 20 yards and radioed his buddy. You got pants on? He waited a few seconds and then calmed back. No. Doug responded, okay, see you in a few minutes. And there was a pause, and then he got a copy back. Off Doug and Challenger drove. Chapter 25, Doug, epilogue, pre-dawn, day three. Doug caught up with his buddy that was working at the AK lab and told him everything that was going on. His friend was skeptical, despite all the other clues, until Doug pulled out one of the printed AKs that he'd swiped from the dam and held it out for display. His friend was an AK expert and examined the rifle and agreed with the conclusion. It had all the special markings of the AKs that the Separatists had been mass-producing for their army. Well, I guess this is war then, Doug's friend said. Doug nodded grimly. More of their friends were starting to arrive to consolidate their resources in a central location as the sun came up. With the last two arrived, they quickly got caught up on the situation when a weird radio call came in. I am the old recycling plant being attacked. Mob, I meant recycling plant. Mob, all in black. Recycling center, please help. Trapped. They all looked at each other. That's where they all used to work before it got shut down. Doug's watch flashed with a simple message. Recyclery. Critical asset. It was time to go save the recycling plant and investigate whoever was radioing from there. Chapter 26. End of story time. Classroom stronghold. Three years after the collapse. Late winter, early spring. So you see, class, that's how I got rescued and how the power was out and everything. They all looked at each other and shrugged. I continued, ah, oh, come on, it had fire and cold and, and a wolf. What else could you possibly want? One of the smart ox responded, it didn't have a train or a flood. The rest of the kids laughed. I thought for a second and responded, there never was a flood, though, and the trains still aren't working. We're, we're working on getting that one working, though. I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Also, the last flood was like 12 years ago. We're really overdue. It's been a cold winter. And if we have a wet, rainy spring, it could flood in the lower areas pretty easily. But don't worry. It can't flood here. We're up way too high and nowhere near an old riverbed or anything. That seemed to make them all happy, and it was time for the parents to start picking up the kids. They'll had started bundling up and thank me for being their teacher and for the stories. I told them all I'd see them tomorrow, and thanks for being such awesome kids. One such awesome kid stopped and asked me a final question. So, Doug has a dog at the end, but he's supposed to save you at the beginning. I don't remember a dog at the beginning. I thought for a second, not really having a good answer. I assumed that they stopped somewhere for a minute first, and he temporarily dropped the dog off. That way it wouldn't mess with the cat in case the cat was there. They were also driving different vehicles when they came to save me. I honestly have no idea. I never thought to ask. She thought for a second. That seemed like a good enough reason, so she got ready to go without any more inquiry about the story. Within a half an hour, all the kids got picked up, and it was time for me to go back to my tiny home and go back to bed. I was starting to see spots as my headache got worse, and I barely made it inside before the black spots got worse. My cat had enough food and water, and I had to lay down quick before I got too dizzy, my heart rate picking up despite not having exerted myself at all. I shut and locked the door and slumped into bed, laying my AR next to me and getting about half my gear off before having to close my eyes. My cat jumped up, meowed at me a few times, then lay down on top of me, facing away, staring at the door. That's all I remember before everything silently and peacefully went to black. So that is the end of book number eight. Um, books one through eight complete volume one. So that is the end of volume one. Volume two picks up with antivirus. And uh, there won't be any teaser for it. So you'll just have to stay tuned because... The rest of the books don't have teasers at the end. Only the first volume does. 
So thank you for reading and don't forget or listening and don't forget to please share with your friends because it helps me out a lot. Thank you and goodbye. Stay safe.